Bebek. You cannot have a donut for breakfast. Hello, Angel. Mm -hmm. Here. Do not tell me this is a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> Your mother thinks that a grilled cheese sandwich every morning is the key to happiness and success. Well, we're all happy and successful, so it must work. Mm -hmm. Gotta go. Bye, honey. You know, Daddy, I'm gonna beat my best time on the relay today. I can feel it. Do you know it? I know it, Daddy. Then you can do it. <laughs> Yay. Whoops. Well, anyways, I'll tell you about it at dinner, okay? All right. Bye. Bye-bye. And that I love, oh, so we must be meek, is by thee whom I love alone. Who can give me the next two lines in the author of this poem? Jody? If thou must love me, let it be for naught except for love's sake only. Do not say I love her for her smile, her look, her way of speaking gently. It's Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Excellent. Oh, for tomorrow, don't forget, pages 110 to 135. <laughs> You know everything. Oh, my wish. Hey, wait. Um, can I see him going to Lisa's party Saturday night? My mom trusts me when I'm with you. Dave's picking me up there. I haven't even asked my dad yet. My mom's working hey, on him. You know, he let my brothers go out when they were only 13, and I'm 15, so... Now, don't just stand there. Go up and talk to him. May. Listen, if he asks you to the party, it'll only make you work harder on your mom to work on your dad. Go, 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 go on. Hi, Lonnie. Hey. Lonnie, come on, buddy. <laughs> I hear he dances like an elephant in the house. <laughs> Hi, Shiloh. Great time, girls. Jody, six tenths of a second faster than your best time. If you gazelles can keep your passes clean in the state championship, maybe I'll finally get a trophy for all the aggravation you put me through. All right, go to the showers, get moving. Jody! Jody! Come here! Um, I'll see you tomorrow, okay, Lon? Bye. Bye. Renee, what are you doing driving Dave's car? Where's Dave? Get him! He decided that instead of going to the Mad Dog concert, he wanted to go to the drag races down in Riverbank. So how'd you get his car? I took his keys and said I wouldn't go. That's how. When I wouldn't give him back, he decided he was going to hitch there. What are you doing? Well, if he got dropped off, it'd be twitching to come up behind him to pick him up in his own car. Renee, you don't even have a driver's license. What? I am a great driver. Renee, I can't do this. I can't do this. I've got to get home. 
What is there to do at home? You're always going home. Homework. Shine it on. Oh, right, right. Tony, I'm moving to Minneapolis next week. If I don't get back together with Dave before then, I never will. And I'll have no one to leave behind. Come on, have a heart. <laughs> you know, you're crazy. I know, you love it. She said she'd be home for supper. There has to be a good reason. I mean, don't get upset. You know what it does to your stomach. Lauren, hi. Rose Hayward here. I'm fine, fine. Thank you. Listen, hon, Jody hasn't come home yet from practice, and we were getting a little worried. Look, it's not like her not to call. I beg your pardon? Are you sure? No, no, no. It's, it's all right. Okay, Lauren, thank you. Bye. She said Jody went with Renee Peterson. Renee was driving her boyfriend's car. He wasn't even in the car. Renee, let's just go home, all right? We're never gonna find him. Yeah, the catch up for once, have some fun. <laughs> We're on the road, we've got music. No one around to tell us no, not, or never. Oh, Renee, do you think that you can pull into the next gas station because I gotta call home? Oh, just tell me we're at the library. It closed at 10. My parents are gonna be worried. If you call, they're gonna scream just as much now as they were later. I just won't make it later. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Haywood, ma'am, sorry to make you come down here at such a late hour, but like I said on the phone, the only way we can look for runaways is the parents sign an unruly warrant. Our daughter isn't a runaway. She hasn't any reason. We're real worried, officer. We checked the hospitals. She's five foot two, brown hair, brown eyes. You just sign on the bottom by the X, just one of you needs to sign. Officer, it says here that we declare our child to be unruly and beyond our control. Jody is an all-A student. And we want to bring her home for you, Ms. Hayward, but like I said, she's underage, so technically, we have to classify her as a runaway. Standard procedure, nothing to worry about. Make some coffee, will you? I'm gonna go look for him. Frank, honey, I don't want you out driving around. Not in this state of mind. Where in the hell have you been? Jerry, are you all right? Are you okay? Where in the hell have you been? I'm sorry, Daddy. We've just come from the sheriff's office. We didn't know whether you were dead, alive, or lying in the gutter somewhere. Calm down. Now, calm down. I'll calm down, down when she tells me where she's been. Daddy, I went with Renee to go look for Dave. Dave is Renee's boyfriend. All night? If you want her to tell us, let her tell us. Daddy, we thought that he was hitching for, to River Glen, and we couldn't find him, so we just kept driving. I'm sorry. I, we, we stopped. We got burgers. It, it was fun. Daddy, we just lost track of time. I'm sorry. I know that I should have called, but I, I did call an hour ago. Well, we signed a warrant. The police could be out looking for you. I better cancel. Mom, I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I did it. Jody, no. She showed up. Don't you ever do anything yeah, everything's fine. like that again. Oh, you should have called. Okay. I that's right, yeah. Right. That's okay. okay. Mom, I don't know why I did it. I didn't mean to. All right. You're home safe now, thank God. I love you. I love you, too. So does your daddy. That's why we were so worried. They want you in juvenile court at 9 o'clock sharp. Why? What for? Well, she, she's home safe now. Oh, I guess the judge wants to see you and Renee boil you out for causing so much trouble. Get changed now. Get cleaned up. Look presentable. It's all right. Uh, 
I wanted to see you parents in chambers before I have a word with your girls. I read here that they have been unruly and that they were away from home without permission. To wit, they stole a car and crossed state lines. Is that accurate? No, sir, Your Honor, sir. Uh, the car belongs to my daughter's boyfriend. They didn't steal it. Did they have his permission to use it? No, sir. Do either of the girls have a driver's license? No, sir. No, sir. Why aren't your spouses here? Well, sir, uh, my husband's in Minneapolis. He just found work there, and uh, <clears throat> my daughter and me, we're moving there a week come Saturday. And we own a dry cleaning establishment. My wife would be here, but we can't afford to close up. We're in a sad era where parents have lost control of their children and don't know how to get it back. Well, I'm here to help you bring discipline back to your families. Well, Your Honor, this is the first time Jody's been in any kind of trouble. Without the fear of punishment, small breaches of the law become large ones. I'll inject a little fear into your girls, like a physician administering a shot. Think of it as a vaccine to cure bad behavior. The courtroom's right through that door. What's he going to do to us? It's all right, honey. He's just going to talk to you a little. All rise. The Millboro County Juvenile Court is now in session. Honorable Judge Julius Sullivan on the bench. No smoking in the courtroom. Be seated. Except for you girls, I want you standing right there. Up straight. These are closed proceedings. No one outside this room will know what goes on. That's because you girls are underage. Parents, I'm required by law to tell you that you're entitled to a lawyer. But having one won't matter in regards to my decision on this, so if you want to spend the money, that's up to you. Either of you want a lawyer for this? No, sir. I guess not, Your Honor. All right. Emily, does the probation department have a report on these girls? Yes, Your Honor. Renee Peterson has missed a total of 11 days of school and has a C-minus average. Jody Hayward's missed only today. She has an A-minus average. I have a rule about truancy. Miss a day of school, spend a day in jail. It's very simple. So I might have additional charges to file here. Now. About this joyride you took in a stolen car. It was my boyfriend's car. You shut your mouth till I tell you to open it. Boyfriend Huff. How old is this boyfriend? 23. He's 23, you're 16. Mother, you approve of that? No, sir, Your Honor, I don't. I just... Don't tell me, tell your girl. Sir, I try, but she don't listen. Then I'll make it crystal clear. From now on, you're not allowed to date that man. You're not allowed to see him or communicate with him in any way. There's no law that says I can't date him. I'm the law. You'd better learn respect for it. Renee, Your Honor, uh, it don't matter. We're leaving town next week. Respect for the law matters, regardless of where you are. Maybe jail will teach her that lesson. You can't put me in jail. I can put you in jail for anything I decide to. You want to go right now? No. What about you? What have you got to say for yourself? It was wrong what I did. Get I your wanted... arms down to your sides and speak up so you're on the record. What I did was wrong. I'm sorry. I won't ever do it again. I don't think you're sorry at all. But I am sorry. I really am. I don't hear remorse in your voice. I don't see tears welling up in your eyes and running down your cheeks. All right. 
I gave you your chance. I'm going to... Because these girls were runaways, and we have no assurance they won't abscond from the jurisdiction of this court between now and Monday morning for their disposition hearing, I'm ordering that they be detained in the Millbury County Jail till that time. I know what's best for girls like these. I told you what I intend to do, and I'm doing it. Jail. No visitors, no phone calls, no candy, no cigarettes. You parents are not allowed to visit. You know where they are. Girls, wish your parents goodbye. You won't be seeing them again for a while. Miss? Miss, could I talk to you for a minute about bail? Turn right. explain something to you both one time. In here, you do what you're told, when you're told. And what you think don't mean squat. You first. You wait over there. What is she out hiding Rose, in the van? Rose, Renee, and what? Jody are both in jail. You said that he was just going to talk to them. He sat up there looking down at us like he was some kind of god. Renee sassed him. He said Jody was totally out of control and he was going to teach him a lesson. An adult jail with criminals? I'm going to go see our no, Jody. You can't right? go. Rose, he won't let anybody in. He won't even let us call her. How long? An hour or what? How long is he going to keep her in? He says he's going to stay there till Monday, but I can't believe it. Good God. We've got to get her out of there. Frank, wait a minute. What do we do? Do we post bail? You asked. Juveniles have no legal right to, to bail or a jury. Or... You're telling me that a judge can put a child in jail and a parent can't do anything about yes, it? He can throw her in jail without finding her guilty of anything. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to wait and we'll pray. Listen, they said the judge comes in there after a while, and if he sees the kids are repentant enough, he lets them out then and there. He's just trying to scare them. We're going to get a call before long. Sure. Yeah, we're going to get a call any minute, I'm sure. Are you sure you didn't just give him the home number? You gave him this number, too. Yes, I gave him both numbers. Now, come on, it's time to close and go home. No, I'm going to wait here till you get home, just in case they call in between. 
All right. I gotta call my mom. Please, she doesn't know where I am. Look, I really didn't do anything. Please don't lock me up. Here. I gotta get out of here. Please, Renee, let me out. Renee, you're please. Gonna get us into more trouble. There it is. There it is. Kill it. Would you please kill it? <laughs> That's how Don Lonnie dances. I thought you'd be sorrier today, but I see you like it here. No, Your Honor, we were just... Shut your mouth when I'm talking to you. You'll see how much you feel like laughing after a few more nights in here. No, Your Honor, don't leave us here! Please, don't go! Shh, shh. Better keep quiet or we can make things worse for you. It can't get worse. Yeah. Hey, do you think that I could use the phone? Please, to call my parents, please? No, no, I didn't have my eye. You get a Milboro? So did I. Name's Corey Yeager. Yeah, we know. Um, I'm Renee, and that, that's Jody. Well, I got some work to do, but uh, I'll catch you later, okay? <laughs> He's dreamy. <laughs> yeah, well, you can forget it, all right? He's got a girlfriend, Shiloh Cole. So what? Corey Yeager. your name? Wouldn't you like to know? You could trust me. I'm a trustee here. I got a lot of pull. Yeah, I can tell by your mop. Uh, listen, listen, you and your friend on the streets by yourself, what do you have a fancy man? What's that? Come here. It's a manager. Good, I got a friend who really feels young. Get your hands off the letter of my middle go. Stop it. Get, don't touch me, you creep. Get back to your cell now. Leave it. You came just in time, then. Guy was a real creep. Who was? The guy with the mop. 
I didn't see any guy with a mop. You didn't either. Say it back, both of you. I didn't see anyone with a mop. I didn't see anyone with a mop. What about you? I can make your time here easy or I can make it hard. It's your choice. I didn't see anyone. You're gonna like it easy a lot better. It's a drag, ain't it? Everybody at parties and us stuck in here on Saturday night. Well, we're just gonna have to make the most of it, right? What's the matter? You don't want to be friendly? She's, she's just freaked out about being here. I used to watch you play uh, football. You were good. I pulled that low life off you. This is the way you say thank you. Seated. Except you girls. Now, stand up straight. Hands at your sides. I had planned to let you both go early, but your attitudes weren't good. Weren't good at all. Yours better now? Yes. That's not better. Yes, Your Honor. I can't hear you. Yes, Your Honor. Do you want to get out of jail? Yes, Your Honor. You're, you're just not about to learn, are you? I said, do you want to get out of jail? God, yes. What about you? Uh, I'll never do anything wrong again. I, I swear. I swear I'll never. Truancy. Run away. Taking a car without permission. Driving without a license. A general lack of respect for authority. I'm sentencing you both to 10 days in county jail. Minus time served. That leaves six. I'm holding those six days over your heads. And if I get you back here for any reason, I'll give you all or any part of them. You're both on probation. You're never to be out after dark without your parents. Miss one day of school, back to jail you come. Skip one class, I'll lock you up. I make my rules simple, don't I? 
Yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's up to you parents to enforce a study program. After school, they come straight home. No TV, no stereo. At night, they study one and a half hours, then go to bed. If their grades go down, that's a violation of probation. Back they come. You girls understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. <clears throat> Your Honor? What is it? Um, I'm on the track team at school. Does that require your staying after school hours? Yes, sir. Then it's a prohibited activity. But we're going to the state championships. You should have thought of the consequences before taking the action. You girls are a disgrace and a shame. If I get you back here for any reason, I will remove you from your homes and put you in with strangers, and there you'll stay till I tell you you can leave. So parents, if they give you a problem, or they get into trouble of any kind, I will remove them from your custody and put them in foster homes. Now, are there any questions on that? So girls, do you like what you're wearing? Or you like that jail smell, and they do smell, don't they? If you want more, raise your hands. Change into your regular clothes and go home. Oh, honey, was it horrible? Are you okay? It wasn't so bad. Angel, he's not going to take you away from us. Never. No way. Yeah, well, that's what you said about jail. Angel, listen to me. I swear I wouldn't have taken you down there if they thought they were going to put you in jail. I swear it. Daddy, I'm real sleepy, okay? Now, listen, honey. Your mom and me have been talking. We want you to come down to the shop and start working after school, starting tomorrow, all right? Oh, I, I really don't feel like going to school tomorrow, Daddy. You heard what the judge said? We don't want to have him put you back in jail. Yeah, but he didn't mean if I was sick. No, wait a minute, honey. We want to start off on the right foot. Unless you really are sick or you got a fever, it's important to go to school tomorrow. Only Samuel Johnson had the integrity. Jody, please take your things and go with Mr. Searle. Now, ladies and gentlemen, shall we continue? Hello, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. We'll continue on with uh, Mr. Johnson. 13 X-ray 7, assist the fire department. No Charlie units available. 6 Adam 3, responding to 6 Beaver 63's location. 7 Charlie 21, Roger. Make it 10, phone the station, code 2. Mr. and Ms. Hayward, come in. You know Deputy Grenfell. Sit down. I'm afraid I have some distressing news for you. 
while your girl was in jail. My God, she was raped. As to how it happened, that's what we're trying to find out from your girl right now in the next room. Talk of me. How could that Just How could that happen? Don't you know what goes on inside your own jail? Miss Hayward, believe me, I know how you feel. If this man sexually battered your daughter while she was in custody, I will personally see to it. He goes... Angel! Angel! Come on. Don't you worry, Angel. We're going to get the man who did this to you. Let's get out. You girl stood in my court and said nothing about this to me or to anyone. Not even to you. Why not? Why didn't you say something, Angel? Because I just wanted to forget it. Let's go. If that man is guilty of what's suggested here, you'd better remember... Frank, come inside. I thought it out, Rose. I'm going to sue Sullivan and the sheriff and this whole damn county if I have to. Frank, let's not rush into anything. I'm getting a lawyer first thing in the morning. Putting a kid in jail with killers and rapists. It's crazy. I know how you feel. Believe me, I feel the same way. But right now I'm concerned about how Jody feels and what's most important for her. What do you want us to do, Rose? Quit and do nothing? Just let it go? Is that what you I'm want? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that she's been through so much, I don't want to put her through anything else. Frank, I don't know. I don't know what's right. Well, I know what's right. I sat in that damn courtroom and watched Sullivan put our little girl in jail. I didn't know what to do then. But I sure as hell know what to do now. Frank, we're exhausted. Let's get a good night's sleep, some rest. Tomorrow we'll, we'll see how we feel about it. Rose, there comes a time when you have to fight back. Our little girl was... Why didn't she kick him? Like I taught her how to kick? How many times did I teach her how to kick? Why didn't she fight? Because maybe if she had, he might have hurt her more. Yeah, and maybe she, he would have stopped. Baby, here's something for your tummy. Daddy blames me, doesn't he? No, he doesn't blame you. He blames Judge Sullivan, and he blames himself. The people in the courtroom, they looked at me like I was trash. No, baby. And Daddy thinks I am, too. No, Jody, no. Honey, your daddy loves you. Right right now, your daddy is in a lot of pain. Jody, your daddy's always been there to look out for you, and, and this time he wasn't. And that's all there is to that. You want to tell me about it? No. I can't, not right now. Well, whenever you get ready, I want you to know that I'm here for you. Mommy? Mommy, I don't want anybody to know. Sweetheart, no one's going to know. Nobody, nobody. It's nobody's business. You're underage, and they have no right to tell your name to anybody. No one's gonna know. Never. No. Great. No, 
I heard you quit the track team. How come? Oh, my folks need me to work at their store. Hey, come on, why don't you stick around till after practice? You know, you and me could go out, do something. I really have to go. Come on, come on, stick around. You got a place we can go, a lot nicer than a jail cell. Hey! Where are you going my daughter? All right, now listen. I'm going to drive you to school every morning and pick you up every afternoon. Daddy, I don't want you to. Marge, they're our kids. We have a right to decide how they're going to be punished. That's right. He's a lawyer, Dennis Speck. Yeah, he's coming in from California today. The Legal Aid Society put me in touch with him. I can count on you then, Marge. Good. Hi, honey. Did you sleep okay? Okay. Marge Kennedy's 12-year-old son was thrown in jail by Sullivan for swearing at a Little League game. Honey, I told you that Mr. Speck was coming this morning. Yeah, well, can you talk to him because I really missed too much school already. And I've missed too much work already. This is important. To you. Would you please tell your daughter to... to, to do something with her hair and, and put a sweater on? Listen here, young lady. Frank! Yes. See the brassiere strap right through that blouse. Jody, you're going to roast in that sweater. Well, he wants me to wear one. I figured this would be thick enough for him. This one is much prettier. Hmm. Come on. I've worn these clothes for years, and now he thinks I look cheap in it. That's not true. It is true. I can see it in his eyes, the way he looks at me. Jody, it's not. It's not you. It's him. Your daddy is all tied up in knots inside. But you know he loves you, Jody. Believe me, you... You're his little angel. But then why can't he let things go back the way they used to be, like nothing ever happened? Things don't ever go back the way they used to be. Nightmares don't go away because you keep your eyes closed. Nightmares stop when you open your eyes. Baby. Oh, you're my baby. Oh, you're my baby. Mr. Hayward. Yes. Hi there. I'm Dennis Spector. Oh. Welcome, sir. No worries. You can call me Frank. Just as long as you don't call me sir. Come on, I'll introduce you to the family. Great. Rose! Rose? Yeah? I want you to meet the lawyer. Dennis Specht, my wife Rose. Mr. Specht. How are you? We've been better. Can I get you something to drink? Some coffee, some fresh lemonade? Did you make the lemonade? You bet I did. I think I'll have the lemonade. You got it. Thanks. How's Jody doing? Not too well. She's in her room. I'll go get her. Here we are, Mr. Speck. Rose, she's not in her room. Frank? I'll, uh, I'll bring her over. No, actually, if you wouldn't mind, Rose, I think I'd just rather go over and introduce myself to her. See, sometimes when children go through traumas like this, it's... it's tough for them to talk about it. Especially with the parents around. If you think that's best. Okay. Hi there. I'm Dennis. I don't want to talk to you on the phone. So why'd you have to come all the way here? I don't know. 
Can't really get to know someone on the phone. Your mom made some lemonade. Yeah. Wow, you know, I used to have a swing set like this. I remember when I was a kid, my grandfather, he, he pushed me so hard, the whole thing toppled over. This one said cement. That's smart. I bet you wish this whole thing would just disappear, huh? Wish I'd disappear. Really? What would you do? I mean, if you could be invisible, who would you sneak up on? Who would you get? Look, I know why you're here, so you don't have to play games with me. That's good. Because I don't, I don't feel comfortable playing games. And I'd really like to feel comfortable with you, Jody. What do you think? You think we can? How should I know? Jody, I know you feel alone. And you feel angry and probably a little guilty, too. But what happened wasn't your fault, and you're not alone. How do you know? Because last year, half a million children were locked in adult jails. Hundreds of them were less than nine years old. For what? What did they do? Some were accused of serious crimes. Most of them were put in jail because they ran away from home, or they were caught smoking, or they cut school. Some were abused children, they were runaways. They didn't deserve to be put in jail any more than you do. Yeah, what happened to me didn't happen to them. No, it didn't. But other bad things do, Jody. Kevin Chambers. He was arrested for owing $70 in parking tickets. Juvenile judge put him in jail with armed robbers and dope dealers. She was a runaway, an abused child. The judge didn't know what to do with her, so he put her in jail for her own protection overnight. And she wasn't alone, because last year, hundreds of children who were put in adult jails tried to commit suicide. I know how they felt. But you didn't do what she did. You were stronger than that, Jody. And if you keep being strong, Jody, you can help a lot of kids stay out of jail. You gotta trust me. You gotta tell me what happened and how it happened. And I'll go into court tomorrow and I'll file a lawsuit that'll prevent it from ever happening in this county again. A lawsuit was filed today against juvenile court judge Julia Sullivan, the sheriff's office, and the city council, alleging that they violated the civil rights of a minor by placing the young girl in Millboro County Jail. Now, while in custody, the 15-year-old was sexually assaulted by a jailer. The lawsuit seeks damages on behalf of the young girl known only as Jane Doe due to her age, as well as an injunction to prevent other minors from being jailed in the adult facility. Just a few moments ago, I got this statement from Judge Sullivan. It has always been my policy and my philosophy to help the children. Oh, will you listen to this guy? I care for them like a father would. And to suggest that I am in any way responsible for this incident is a defamation of my character. I will take appropriate action. Yeah. <laughs> my name and my And so will I. This lawsuit is a slap in the face to the good people who elected me. It has absolutely no merit. In fact, it was turned down by every lawyer in the community. You liar. You liar. They turned it down because they're the afraid of you. was arrested on suspicion of car theft after her parents filed an unruly warrant with the How can she? How can he say that? She didn't steal anything. They fooled us into signing that warrant. Frank, the truth will come out. It'll come out, all right, huh? They sealed you on our records to protect kids, they say. You know what it does? It protects judges like Sullivan. Now that I've filed a lawsuit, I'm going to subpoena all of Sullivan's court records. And with the people you have set up for me to interview, I'm going to nail this guy, Frank, I promise you. All right. You listen to that? I don't know how I can get away with that kind of stuff. 
Jane Doe? I don't know. Sounds like a pretty boring name. I think we can do better than that. What do you think? I mean, legally, we have to use Doe, but you can pick any first name you want. Well, I might as well use Jody Hayward. Everybody's gonna know anyway. No, the court can't reveal your identity. Look, this is a very small town. People know. <laughs> I mean, they're gonna see me going in and out of court. What are you gonna do, put a bag over my head? Even if you do that, people are still gonna see my folks. You're right. I'm not gonna lie to you, Jody. They'll probably figure out who you are. That's why the decision to do this has gotta be yours. I mean, you say the word, and I'll pull the plug on this thing right now. Yeah, right. Give my dad a heart attack. No, your father wants what's best for you. Really. I mean, he gets a little excited, but that's because he loves you very much. Where'd you go to law school? Yale. Graduate at the top of your class? Pretty close. So how come you do this? What? Spend your time working for kids? You saw some pretty terrible things, Jody. I mean, the law is supposed to protect children, not abuse them. Putting children in, in jail for their own good is... That's bad. It's not good. It's very dangerous. I'm just trying to stop it. What was the name of that girl? The one who killed herself in jail? Danielle. Danielle Marcus. Would it be okay if I used her name in the trial? Danielle Doe? Yeah, I think she would have liked that. <laughs> so, when the deputy saw me smoking, he come over and I ran. Yeah, and he grabbed me. And Lyle doesn't even smoke. Did you tell Judge Sullivan it was your twin brother who was doing the smoking? Yeah. He said he heard that one before. My husband showed him their birth certificates. But Judge Sullivan said that the sheriff arrested Lyle, and that was that. He didn't care. He said that we were bad parents, that we didn't punish our kids hard enough. Then he picked up this paddle, you know, and he smacked it against his hand, saying that it wasn't too late to start teaching him right. You're saying that Judge Sullivan had a paddle in his courtroom? We never hit our kids, ever. But we thought if maybe my husband swatted Lyle there a few times in court, you know, for the judge, that that'd be it. But it wasn't it, was it? He still threw me in that cesspool. Wow, honey. I'm sorry. It's just that he's been like this ever since he got out of jail. Angry all the time. He was never angry like this before. I know what you're going through, Mrs. Thompson. I just cannot understand how they can put children who misbehave in jail like they were criminals. Mrs. Thompson. This is a psychologist named Jane Rabin. She provides services free for children who've been in jail. She can help Lyle. I put my number on the back. If you need anything, day or night, you call me, all right? Thank you. Thank you both. But what if Judge Sullivan finds out that I'm helping you? He could put Lyle back in jail. Nobody's going to take your child away. And nobody's going to put him in jail. I promise you that. We'll make sure that Sullivan never does that kind of thing again. All right. Well, whatever I have to do, you just tell me, and I'll do it. Thank you, Sarah. Lauren! Lauren, you think that you and I could go somewhere just to talk? Jody, I can't. I gotta practice. Please? I can't. I need to cool down. Lauren, come on. I thought you were my friend. Look, some of us are going to go to Moody's after practice. If you want to come by, go ahead.
Jody. Listen, Angel, I've been sitting over there for half an hour waiting for you. I want to stay and watch the team practice. Come on. Your mother's waiting at the store. No. Jody, I don't want an argument with then you. Then why don't you just let me come to the store by myself? All right, I'll be there before dark, okay? No, it's not okay. In fact, your whole attitude is not okay. Look, the team already lost the state championships. Everybody is going over to Moody's after practice, and I just want to go and be with them for a while. Want to get thrown back in jail? Is that what you want for Sullivan to throw you back in jail? What difference does it make? I feel like I'm locked up anyways. Where is she? She is getting ready. That's where she is. Jody! We're going to be late for the practice deposition with Dennis. What is this? You said dress nice. Well, honey, you look beautiful. It's just that you've never worn that much makeup or your hair that way before. She can't go out of the house looking like this. Looking like what? What's Let's going go. on around here? Let's just go. Honey. This is not playtime. What's happening tonight is important. Frank, please. Did you take a look at her? Yes, I did. This is the room we're going to use for the deposition tomorrow. Deposition is, well, it's really a legal proceeding in which we try to figure out the strengths and the weaknesses of the other side. See how a witness holds up under pressure. It's where cases are won or lost. Jody, why don't you sit here? Now, what I wanted to do is sort of bring you here and give you a feel of what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, I'm going to ask you questions that they're going to ask you tomorrow. I want you to think before you answer. Try not to be intimidated by the way I'm going to question you. And just tell the truth. We'll be right here for you, sweetheart. Would you like a glass of water or something before we start? Miss Dell, you're 15 years old, is that correct? One other thing, you can't nod your head. You have to speak up for the record. You 15, yes or no? Yes, I was born... Uh... And don't give them any more information than they ask for. Now, where do you go to school? Millboro High. Is that where you were with the other girl before you stole that car? Yes, but we didn't so steal it. So then you admit to stealing the car? No. You just said yes. Yes or no, which is it? Did you steal the car, didn't you? No. Then what were you so afraid of? I don't know. Then why didn't you call your parents? Why didn't you call home? Just didn't. What kind of girl stays out all night and doesn't call home? I don't know. Was it a good girl, a bad girl? Which? I don't know. Well, does a good girl stay out all night and not bother to call her parents, for God's sake? No. Well, then what does that make you? Whose fault do you think all this is? Well, you think it's your father's fault? No. No, I don't think so either. I don't think he thinks very much of you. I mean, he signed a warrant to have you arrested. He didn't sign any warrant. They pulled me down. Stay out of this. Tell her those things. Frank. Don't ask her things like that. Frank, please, no, stay out. Frank. Stay out of it or leave. We're not going to get anything done. So whose fault do you think it was, Daniel? Judge Sullivan? Yes. Why? Because he put you in jail. Yes. Why do you think he put you in jail? Huh? I don't know. It was to teach you a lesson, wasn't it? I guess. Why? Because you did something very wrong. Yes. So you see, it really is your fault, isn't it? Now, when Corey Yeager came into your cell to take you with him, what did he say? Let's go. What did you do? What? You didn't fight him? No. Did he threaten you? Sort of. Did he have his gun drawn? No. And why did you go with him? Huh? Why did you go with him? Then you tell me why you went to that cell with Corey Yates. Just leave me alone! All right, you do this. I can't take it anymore. Jody. You can't do 
Well, if she can't handle this, it's all over. Let me go talk to her. No. You stay away from her. You've already done enough to her. You can't talk to her like that. She didn't do anything! Frank. He did it! It's his fault! Frank, where are you going? I'm gonna see how she is. Play God, Sullivan. You can't ruin other people's lives. You're drunk. I'm not drunk. I know what I'm doing for the first time in a long time, and you're going to pay for what you did. Don't come here trying to blame me for your inadequacy as a father. My little girl is... was guilty as sin and guilty of... Shut your mouth. I'm going to destroy your case tomorrow. You and your girl along with it. Now get out of here before I have you arrested. Get out of here. You've been here all this time? Honey, you didn't come home tonight. I've been worried sick. Rose, I got a gun and I went to Sullivan's. And I waited for him. And he showed up. And I, I, I couldn't do anything. I. Uh, I just stood there. I let him insult me. And I let him insult our daughter. I didn't have the guts for us. I, I wasn't man enough. Honey. Honey, a man doesn't kill for his daughter. A man is there when she needs him. But I wasn't there. Honey, she needs you now. She's scared. She's scared that you don't love her, that you blame her, that you're never going to forgive her for what happened. Frank, you're going to lose her. And if you lose her, you may never get her back. What should I do, Rose? Darling, you go to her. And you share with her what's in your heart. Shape, that's all. 
<laughs> you want me to help it? You want me to work that cramp out for you? No, thank you. I'll be fine. Remember when you were a little girl and you ran too much and got a cramp? You always said I was the only one who could take the pain away. Yeah, well, not little anymore. Angel, please don't walk away. I'm not your angel. Stop calling me that. And you are not a saint. You are my father, and I am your daughter. Why can't we be just that? We can. That's enough, isn't it? Of course it's enough. Then why can't you love me no matter what? I do. <laughs> Daddy, what is it? <sighs> Why? Why did you let Corey Yeager... Why didn't you scream? Somebody would have heard you. I couldn't. Why couldn't you? Because it was jail. Have you ever been in jail? You have no idea what it is like. You have to do what they say. <gasps> I was scared. Oh, God, I was so scared. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I let this happen to you. Daddy, it wasn't your fault. And I don't think that what happened to me was my fault either. I know. It's just that I don't want to see you go through any more pain. I love you. You're the only thing that counts now. What about Dennis and the deposition? We'll just tell him you've gone through enough. I just don't know if I can sit in the same room with Judge Sullivan. You again. don't have to. Daddy, what do I do? And I'll tell you this. Whatever you decide, I'll be with you all the way. My name is Spencer Mulholland. I'll be Judge Sullivan's attorney in this action. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Give verbal responses. By that, we don't want you to shake your head either yes or no, but simply state yes or no. Don't use slang. We have been advised that you will be referred to as Danielle Doe because of your age, etc. We're not here to trick you. We're just here to find out your version of what happened. Do you understand? Yes. Now, Miss Doe, uh, what is your age? Fifteen. And you attend Millboro High School? Yes. And how are your grades at the present time? Not very good. Why not? Because of this. Because of the pressures of this lawsuit? And what caused it. The fact is, isn't it, that you didn't want any part of this lawsuit? That's not the fact. You don't even want to be here now. Who made you come here today? Who is responsible for pressuring you into this lawsuit? Him. Jody, uh, excuse me, Danielle, staying out all night in a car that didn't belong to you was wrong, wasn't it? Yes. 
You knew you'd be punished for it, didn't you? Yes, by my parents. But they turned over that responsibility to Judge Sullivan. Now tell me, would you do it again? Stay out all night in a car that didn't belong to you? No. So in other words, Judge Sullivan did teach you a valuable lesson, didn't he? Didn't I didn't he? need him to. I knew what I did was wrong already. I didn't need to be put in jail for it. When Judge Sullivan came to the jail the next day to let you out... Objection. There's no evidence he ever intended to release the girl. When Judge Sullivan visited you in your cell, you were laughing. Now, did you think being in jail was funny? No. Why were you laughing? Just before uh, a cockroach was crawling on Renee. And she was screaming. She was so scared. It was, I mean, it was either for, have her freak out or laugh. So I made her laugh, and then I just started laughing, too. So you were able to keep your sense of humor, even though you were in jail. I guess. It's boring in jail, isn't it? Scary. Scary. So you must have, uh, you must have been relieved to see Corey Yeager. Good-looking football hero. Someone to look out for you. No. Come on now. Saturday night, can you really tell me you weren't the least bit glad to see Corey Yeager? I wasn't the least bit glad to see him. Yet you went with Corey Yeager alone to that isolation cell. Yes. He threatened you? No. He didn't hit you, slap you? No. Well, what did he say? Let's go. Did he have his gun drawn? No. Did he pick you up, drag you, pull you? No. Then why'd you go with him? I had to. Did he yell at you? He whispered. <laughs> whispered. Now, come on. Tell the truth. Did you scream? No. Did you fight, kick? No. You enticed him, didn't you? No. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You wanted him. I wanted him dead. The only thing that I did wrong was staying out all night. But kids shouldn't be put in jail for stuff like that. You said you wanted me to cry. Okay. You made me cry. Are you happy now? This is a legal proceeding. What matters here are facts, not emotions legal facts, and on those I can refute most, more than most, of everything that girl said. Judge Sullivan, if you'd like to state your side of the story now. You bet I would. All right, young lady. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I didn't give you permission to question my client. You just said. I said was if you'd like to give your version of what happened, I'd be more than happy to take your deposition right now. Fine with me. The judge's deposition isn't scheduled until next week. I'm ready if you are. Julius, I know what I'm doing. I, Judge Julius Sullivan, swear and affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Go. 
This isn't going to be a forum for you to spout your personal opinions. And you're not going to attack my client. I'm going to ask you questions. And you'll confine your answers to my questions. Understood? Ask away. Is that understood? It ain't complicated. Good. You have any professional training in juvenile justice? I'm a juvenile court judge and a probate judge. Do you have any specialized training in juvenile justice? 30 years practicing law, raising two kids. How about child psychology? No. How about sociology? What for? Any training in corrections? Not as such. Any training in penology? No. Ever take any seminars or classes on juvenile corrections? Those who can do. Those who can't teach. Did you ever take any classes at a university in child corrections? I just answered that. Separate question. I went to the school of HK. And what is that? Hard knocks. That's where you learn. Hard knocks. So in fact, you have no professional expertise whatsoever in juvenile corrections. I was duly elected by the people of this community. And I've turned literally hundreds of unruly, unrighteous delinquents like her into good, honest, obedient citizens. By putting them in jail? You bet. Taking them from their families, huh? Putting them in healthier environments. 17-year-olds? Sure. 14-year-olds? If they need it. Well, how young is the youngest child you've put in jail? I'd have to check my records. I checked them. How about 11 years old? No, it's impossible. One would think so. 11-year-old Josh Bryant. You had him brought to court because he and four other children were riding on the sidewalk in chalk. You remember that? One arm wrote an obscenity on the sidewalk, and the others wouldn't say which one it was. So you had all five put in jail till they talked. That's right, and it worked. That, they were in under 24 hours. Most kids are in less than that. These are children you're talking about. How long do you think they have to stay in jail before they're scarred for life? What about Danielle Doe? How did she come to appear before you in court? Her parents reported her to the sheriff's department, said she was unruly and they couldn't control her. She was brought before me. Her father said she needed to be taught a lesson for me to do whatever was necessary to bring her back into line. I suggested jail and he agreed. That's a lie. He said he couldn't control her. He signed the warrant. It's in writing. What's your rule on corporal punishment in your court? I don't lie. And all the time you've been a juvenile court judge? Never threatened a child with it? No. Then what do you keep the paddle in the courtroom for? Well, that's there. If, if parents want to paddle their children and ask me to use it, it's their fault. By what right do you justify the paddling of children in a court of law? In the rules. What rules? To aid a child in becoming a good person and a good citizen. Is that from statute? Oh, well, not, not as such. Now, look, I'm not the only judge with a firm hand. My brethren from the East Coast all the way to the West use the same deterrents that are legally available to us. Yeah, well, right now, we're only concerned with your choice of deterrents. Did you ever order a girl confined to Millboro County Jail and denied that girl medical care or medication? No. What about Millie Collier? I don't know that name. I'll refresh your memory. You're very organized, are you, Counselor? I think this would be a good time for a recess. Millie Collier, 14 years old. You had her brought to your court for being tardy too often. Her parents testified that she had an illness that at times prevented her from walking as fast as other children. You remember her yet? No, I, I don't know. You didn't believe them. Even when she collapsed in your courtroom, you insisted she was faking it. She was. She was faking. 
And when she couldn't walk out on her own, you had her crawl on her hands and knees. And then you threatened she anyone... She could have gotten up. ...who tried to help her with contempt of court. She was faking. She was faking, and I would have proved Millie she was Collier faking. Millie Collier nearly died in jail because you refused to allow her medication. Let me see that. The drugs they wanted her to use were illegal substances. Read the report. They were prescribed by her doctor. Drugs are what gets all these kids in trouble, like her. She doesn't use drugs. She will, unless she's taught her lesson early. None, none of you know how these kids are, the, the ones who skip school and smoke and won't listen to their elders. Oh, you mean the ones that have to learn their lesson in your court? That's right. Yes. You don't understand. It's, it's not really their fault. See, they're born good. But somewhere along the line, they go astray. But they want to be made good again. And someone, someone has to draw the line and show them that they do not pass that line or they will pay the consequences. And if they do cross that line, then they've got to be pushed back behind it. You understand? Pushed back. Pushed hard. By a super parent. I mean, that is what you call yourself. Children, children are what makes America great. But they need a strong hand to pull them along the right path. Someone to show them the way when their parents... Because parents... I... I don't blame parents. It's, it's, not, it's not parents' fault. It's peer pressure. Peer pressure is stronger than parent pressure. I have set up in my court a pattern of pressure that is stronger than peer pressure. I make kids afraid of me so they don't succumb to peer pressure. It's in the Bible. Be informed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. I make them afraid of what I will do to them. They don't succumb. I don't, I don't want them to hate me. I've sacrificed myself for them. They want to settle out of court. They'll give us almost everything we want. We got him. I knew we'd get him. But should we do that? We should take him to court, show the whole world what Sullivan's like. Well, that's up to all of you. If we settle now, will that stop Judge Sullivan from ever putting kids in jail again? Absolutely, Jody. No child in this county will ever be put in jail again. Jody, we're proud of you. Judge Sullivan lost in the next election. Coyego was sentenced to 10 years in jail.
got out after 30 days on something called shock parole. That's hard for me to understand. Dennis is still going around the country defending kids. As for me, they paid me damages, which I guess is a good word for it. I used it to leave Millboro. I needed to go away. I talk to Mom and Dad a lot. Dad tries not to show up, but I know he worries about me. I still run. It makes me feel better. But what Mom says doesn't seem to be working. My eyes are open, but the nightmares haven't gone away. Stay tuned, because up next on True Movies 1, Incident at Dark River. Alternatively on True Movies 2, The Alamo, 13 Days to Glory. And on True Entertainment, The History of Rock and Roll.